Okay, so you all know the first voice of Mickey, Walt Disney. Hey, Poodle! And the second voice, Jimmy McDonald. Hi, folks! But Jimmy retired in 1977. So who's been voicing the mouse all this time? Let's find out. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Born on February 7th, 1947 in Glendale, California, cause, you know, location, 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 Wayne was active on stage and screen most of his life, making his first television appearance at age 7 as one of the children interviewed by our King Ark Linkletter on his house party program. While still in high school, Wayne formed an acoustic music group that became a popular attraction in clubs and colleges throughout California. He subsequently recorded with the singers Bobby Vinton and Dobie Gray. Later, he formed other bands and had a stint with Davey Allen and the Arrows, for which he played rhythm guitar on the hit Blues' Theme. In 1966, Wayne opted for a normal lifestyle and took a job in the mailroom at the Walt Disney Studios. But normal? With the Walt? No way! I had wanted to work for Disney since I was a kid, but didn't know how to get in. Well, one of the bands I was playing with, uh, Tom Jackman's father, Tom was leader of the band, his father, Bob Jackman, ran the music department. And Bob gave me a, a, an application and a recommendation, and I started in the mailroom. Way, way back when. And uh, the thing that's funny is a little, little known fact, Bob Jackman, after Pinto Kolvig had left the studio, Bob supplied the voice for Goofy in a, several of the cartoons. I mean, really, really a good match. So in essence, Goofy hired the future Mickey. <laughs> it's one of those little odd, odd things that occurred. But I started out carrying mail. Uh, I saw Walt uh, a couple of times, but we only spoke once. He was very sick. and. Uh, it was a magic time, it really was. Uh, 1966, John McCarthy was running traffic, as the mailroom was called back then, and just said, take a walk around and see what you want to do. So I walked around, and uh, the first thing I thought of, well, I've, I've done some acting. Wardrobe looks like fun. The love clothes, love clothes. Did that for a while. Uh, went back into traffic and said, gee, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do, Mac. I, I might leave. I, think I might leave for a while and just see what's on the outside. So great. I left, and I got a call about two months after I left saying, would you like to come in and learn Jimmy McDonald's job? Now, at the time, I didn't know who Jimmy was. I mean, I, he was just another fellow on the lot who walked around with a lot of pencils in his pocket. <laughs> and I, sure, what am I supposed to do? Follow Jimmy, do everything he does. <laughs> So I followed Jimmy, and I learned how to do sound effects. Wayne studied under Jimmy McDonald for seven years, learning all the ins and outs of the craft. He also was uh, an excellent mathematician. He used to drive me crazy when I first came in. He'd want me to, to watch a scene in a movie and then break it down musically. Somebody's footsteps. What tempo are they, are they walking in? Oh, it was rough. It was hard because I, I'm sitting there and I've got all these click loops and I'm trying to... <laughs> and I'd go back and he'd say, no, no, see, these are like quarter notes. It just, it just works like this. And I, oh, I, I banged my head against the wall for a while until I went down. Jack Wadsworth uh, was the music editor at Disney at the time. Uh, he and the fellow Ray Craddock that ran sound effects took me aside and said, kid, we always have to adjust Jimmy's footsteps. <laughs> They're never perfect. Don't worry about it. Well, I wish they'd have told me earlier. <laughs> For more information about Disney sound effects, check out our episode on Jimmy McDonald right here. If not, please be entertained by this cat photo. We've got something for everyone on Disographies. Meanwhile, Jimmy was nearing the end of his time with Disney. Yeah. yeah, he was having a rough time and couldn't really voice Mickey any longer. And the studio had an open audition. Uh, an actor didn't show up. There was a call from the soundstage, send the kid down, he works with McDonald. Three months later, Lou Debney stopped me and said, kid, you're gonna join Screen Actors Guild, they're gonna use you. And that's how I became Mickey Mouse. Ah, hi folks, hi folks, this is Mickey, and Mickey too. You are? I thought so. Well, you are now, okay. 
Well, Walt was a, a high baritone voice, naturally, and he smoked, which brought his pitch down. If you listen to the early Mickeys, Come on, we gotta hurry! You hear a higher voiced Mickey than you do say, uh, the last time he voiced Mickey was for the Mickey Mouse Club back in 1955. Hi, Musketeers! It's a different voice. Mm -hmm. And the, the man aged, and of course, as I say, the smoking dried out the vocal cords, which lowered the pitch. Walt's early Mickey has a lot of energy and a lot of feistiness. And as he gets older, he sort of becomes the guy next door. He becomes an everyman, really. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy's Mickey was interesting. Jimmy was a bass, nice deep voice. And for him to do Mickey, he had to really work at it. And you can hear a, a, a texture in Jimmy's Mickey that you don't hear in Walt's. Yeah, fellas, I sold the cow for some magic beans. I'm a tenor, so for me the falsetto is actually higher, higher pitched, I think, than Walt's, just slightly higher. Ooh, listen to this. Earn $999.99 for a mindless day's work. Oh boy, I'm back in business. When I started back in 1977, uh, Mickey was already a star at the theme parks. So I'm an old rock and roller, and I approached Mickey from, from the attitude of uh, a big rock show in a stadium. You've got to literally send that energy out to everybody. So whereas as Walt and Jimmy worked on the screen, and Jim worked a little bit on TV, my job was to take him even further, keep that energy up, go out and, and really drive the character. And I've managed to, to sustain that so far. In 1977, Jimmy officially retired from the Disney studio, but not without leaving Wayne with one important piece of advice. YOLO! Or, I mean, this. This big piece of advice to me, uh, to sort of keep the character in check, my ego and the character's <laughs> ego in check, was just remember, kid, you're only filling in for the boss. It's really not about me, it's about Mickey. And Mickey is Waltz. So what I do is I get to, to take this wonderful American icon and, and keep it alive until the next Mickey comes along, and it will one day. And that's, that's also one of the, the, the heartbreaks of the character, doing the job, because, you know, I'm three, there's going to be a four. And it's, it's, it's holding him close enough to really love him, but not so close that when he leaves, it's going to kill me. Allwine's first appearance as Mickey was voicing the animated lead-ins for the new Mickey Mouse Club in 1977. His first appearance as Mickey for a theatrical release was in the 1983 featurette Mickey's Christmas Carol. In the same film, he voiced a Santa Claus on the street appealing for charity donations at the start of the movie, Molly, who appears with Ratty collecting for the poor, and one of the two weasel undertakers in the Christmas future scene. Dang, dude was the whole movie basically. Other characters he's played outside of Mickey include one of the guard thugs in the best Disney film ever made that should get way more respect and... Okay, who let Adam get a hold of the script again? Anyways, it's The Great Mouse Detective. And you can hear more about that film here. Happy Adam? Plus Ludwig von Drake in the Disney Channel special Ludwig's Think Tank. Movies he's appeared in include Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Mickey Donald Goofy the Three Musketeers, and The Prince and the Pauper. This last one is one of his best performances, playing two main characters. So some pretty heavy hitters. Wow! You look just like I thought, I thought you were. were. Wait, 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 wait. Just a moment. Now, who are you? And who uh, is your uh, tailor? Uh, the name's Mickey. M Mickey Mouse. Your, your royal highness. I, I mean, oh, uh, the bigger boy. Well, Mickey, I must thank you for saving my life. Saving your life? I was about to die. On television, he's appeared in Mickey Mouse Works, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and Disney's House of Mouse. He also performed Mickey on computer games, toys, parades, and attractions in the Disney theme parks. The success of Allwine's performance was due not just to his ability to capture the famous falsetto, but his talent for imbuing it with an enthusiasm, optimism, and childlike naivete that were the hallmarks of Mickey's character. People like to be happy. Just a fact. In time, you actually realize all of the characteristics that this character has in yourself, Wayne said of his prolific performances as Mickey. I've got all his naive qualities and all of his optimistic qualities. Cheer up. I'm sure there's some way we can become musketeers. We can? Hey, Goo, you know we can prove Pete's wrong about us if we just work hard and stick together. 
you really think so? Hey, have I ever let you down? Huh? Have I? 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 <laughs> no. Just imagine, guys. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But someday, Captain Pete's gonna march in here and say, Congratulations, boys! Huh? Following in the footsteps of his mentor, Jimmy McDonald, Wayne also continued his career in sound editing, working on numerous Disney films, among them Something Wicked This Way Comes, 1983, The Black Cauldron, 1985, and Three Men and a Baby, 1987. His work for other studios included Inner Space, 1987, Alien Nation, 1988, and Star Trek V The Final Frontier 1989. In 1986, he shared an Emmy for his sound editing on Steven Spielberg's NBC television series Amazing Stories. But to me, all stories are amazing. Aww. He also received the Golden Reel Award from the Motion Picture Sound Editors for his work on Disney's, oh, I can't believe this, The Great Mouse Detective. Smile, everyone. <laughs> In 1991, he married Rusi Taylor, who voiced Minnie Mouse from 1986 to 2019. Yep, that's right, Mickey and Minnie were married in real life too. Also in the 90s, being an accomplished Dixieland jazz drummer, Wayne occasionally sat in with the Firehouse 5 Plus 2 alumni George Probert's Monrovia Old Style Jazz Band. Unfortunately, Allwine died in 2009 of hypertensive crisis caused by complications from acute diabetes at the age of 62. His final performances as Mickey Mouse were in the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse episode, The Golden Boo Boo, and the video game Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, which were released after his death. Allwine was inducted as a Disney legend in 2008 along with his wife Rusi Taylor, and was immortalized with bronze plaque handprints at the Disney Studios Burbank Studio Legends Plaza. At the time of his passing, he had done the voice of Mickey Mouse longer than anyone else, 32 years. Very bittersweet and touching, of course. Wayne Allwine was an incredible actor who not only followed in the footsteps of his mentor Jimmy McDonald, but did so with love and respect for the medium he was performing in. Roy E. Disney said it best, I think. Wayne not only gave a voice to the character of Mickey, but gave him a heart and soul as well. He did an incredible job bringing emotion, humor, and appeal to the character, and superbly carried on the tradition originated by my Uncle Walt. I will! I will, sir! And a bah humbug! <laughs> I mean, a Merry Christmas to you, sir! Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our Coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another discography.